Uh, today we're going to go through the basics of heater wiring uh, applying to uh, espresso ma machines in general. So uh, most machines are single phase even though there might be multiple wires. Okay, but basically you're looking at ground and in general the uh, uh, two power wires. Now, it doesn't matter if it gets switched or what. It it only matters that there's 220 or whatever voltage you're using. Okay. Um, and then you have the ground, which is a safety factor. Okay. Uh, there may be a second, I mean, a fourth a wire, um, which is a neutral. Uh, it may or may not be hooked up in your machine. Okay. And then these might be probably tied together. Okay. Anyway. So you got power going into the machine, and there's an on-off switch. Uh, there's an on-off switch that looks, on a lot of the machines, it's it's kind of a barrel switch with a black knob, okay? Um, and that turns on the power on and off. Um, there's several variations. Uh, there's smaller ones, and there's bigger ones, depending on, depending on the voltage and how much power it's using. Okay, then it goes through an on off switch, which can be uh, uh, in the older models, it can be a contactor, which uh, uses uh, contacts to uh, turn a switch on and off. Okay, so it has a definite uh, clicking sound, similar to the water valves. Okay, then on the more current machines there's usually a power uh, a digital power block uh, in other words this is a power switch uh, it's solid state it's you know one solid piece and uh, they're usually controlled by simple relays uh, or uh, sensors uh, on a computer board okay so that turns off the power on and off uh, to the heater now the heater looks like something like this. Okay, this one has two elements. Okay, generally speaking, one element is one loop, okay? So the wire, the power goes in here, goes all the way up and around, and comes back out here, okay? Uh, this one happens to have two loops. So this has like double the heat, okay? Generally speaking, the uh, both sides are tied together and then power goes in here and comes out, okay? Uh, so they both heat up at the same time. Now it's possible one of these will get damaged and not work, and the other one will continue working. Uh, you'll get heat, it'll come to a boil, but it will probably be half the time, okay? So that's an indication that one of these elements is broken, okay? Um, it's all it is is a heating element coil inside of a, cop, a copper tube and there's sand inside and to prevent it from touching the sides of the of the uh, uh, tubing okay uh, this other tube is just uh, empty tube which has you put a sensor down in here okay so th this heater well not this particular one would go in a typical tank now this is a spare hot water tank for m50 light I believe anyway it's it's different from the larger boilers okay so this is a smaller tank there would be a small version of this going in here and mounted it inside okay in fact it has the same this has the same pattern huh. okay it's just too long anyway um, so this is just a plain oh, hot water boiler okay uh, with probes for sensors drainage and also water feed uh, in input and output, okay? So this is a separate boiler. So it's kind of a square, smaller square one, okay? Um, yeah, uh, a lot of the more modern solid state, solid state uh, uh, have the solid state uh, switches. They're usually controlled by smaller buttons because they can have their electronically controlled. So uh, they have a 
more tendency the sutures could be smaller or in this case in the M 50s and 49s they're uh, controlled by the computer board okay so so on a junior I, I pointed out that barrel switch and then the black knob okay that's this black knob here and the heater this only has one coil one loop okay um, the one loop has power and in this case uh, it's supposed to have a, a, a high limit switch which is here uh, in this particular unit it's been shorted out which is not recommended uh, I'm going to put back the the high limit back in I, I have a lot of spares anyway uh, but that's later okay so I just want to describe you have power coming in on a lug and power coming out another way you can tell is these little red that's the ends of the loops and in this particular case since it's 110 and it can only handle one one heater element okay whereas the bigger machines can handle up to three okay so again the switch going to the heater and so on okay now on the M50, uh, M49 and 50s we have We have uh, three heater elements. Oops. Let's see if we can get closer. Okay. Is that, can I see it? Mm. Oh, there it is. Oh. Okay, we have three heater elements. Uh, I have a video on removing the cover, uh, but we'll go ahead and do that right now, just to show you what's going on. Oh, like I said, found an O-ring on the ground. Yeah. Pick these up and keep them. Okay, again, a Phillips screwdriver. Uh, there's one screw on the top. There is a, that sensor I mentioned for that hollow tube. This is a, a high limit. It has a, a remote probe, a long one like this. And this is a, a temperature probe. Goes to a, another safety switch. And we'll pull that out. Pull the cover off. Okay. Oops, actually there's three screws. A lot of times when we're working on a machine, we just put one back in because we know we're going to be taking it on and off. Um, but it's good to put all of them back in when, when it goes back out in the field. Okay. There's also, there's also a diagram on the cover showing how it's wired. It even shows the numbers, the letters, R, S, T, U, V, W. And that's what these should be labeled as. And as you can see, the top layer, the top ones, which is T3 goes to wire T3. It's marked on the wires. Uh, it's all in parallel. Now you're looking for, generally you're looking for burns like this. And it's an indication that the, the, the terminal is overheating. Now in this case, uh, this was a previous unit. So these, these lugs got replaced. So you, can saw, so you can see this is all shiny. Okay. Anyway, there's three of them, three loops. Okay, so one, two, three. So this has three elements, whereas you can tell this one has two. So this one has, uh, uh, each, each element has two, two lugs. So, so this one has two, so this is a total of four. This one has three lugs, uh, three elements, so it has six lugs. Okay, but they're still wired the same way. This one's in three in parallel, okay? So that's, that's all that is, and, and it's inserted into the tank, and it's controlled by an uh, uh, electronic block right here, solid state block. And in this particular case, it's controlled by uh, the computer and a relay. Okay. So a relay turns on the, the, the electronic uh, switch, and 
it turns the heater on and off. Now, what controls the heat? In all cases, including the junior, it will sense in the water level probe, let's see if you can see that, very top, okay, here. The, yeah, the water level probe, which is right here. So you can see it's at the very top of the tank, okay? So the water has to fill all the way up here before the switch turns on and turns on the heater. Okay, let's move back. Okay, so so in order for, in the case of the junior, what we did was we took off the, uh, the, um, the, uh, one of the, the valves on the top and then we just poured water in. Now, uh, on this machine, I would not recommend that for one thing, this is all crowded and you can't really get in. Uh, you need to hook this up to water, okay? Uh, because this is this unit takes a lot of water, especially if it goes into cleaning mode. I mean, there's gonna be a light, about a, uh, I would say half a gallon of water will go through it in the cleaning mode. Okay, so so this needs to be hooked up to water. There's, yeah, you can use since since I did hook up the since I did hook up the pump, you can use you can use a water pump uh, a water pump to draw up water from a a, a cart a tank. Uh, but generally speaking, you should use you should use. Uh, you should use uh what do you call uh so i did hook up uh i did hook up the water pump back in okay so generally speaking if the if the check valve works it will and the water pump is primed uh it will draw water from a bucket okay but in the cleaning mode it won't it needs pressure for cleaning mode. okay so so just remember that that you do need water pressure for cleaning this machine so it's best just to hook it up to, to the city water okay so so i'm going to go through in summary power comes in goes to your uh on off switch and then the power, when it's turned on, it goes straight to your uh, switch or contactor on the on the standard machines, the standard two head, three head uh, espresso machines. It's a contactor similar to this. Okay, uh, might be bigger. Okay, then it goes from uh, the switch. It goes to the heater. Okay, so the only thing that turns on these contactors are it's also hooked up to the water level probe. Water level probe senses the water. So what happens is the water fills up the tank. And once the tank reaches this level, then it tells this switch to turn on. You Okay, it's okay to turn on. And it turns on, it turns on the heat. So if the heater's not coming on, like you put an amp probe here or you check voltages here, there's no voltage. If the heater doesn't come on, that means you don't have enough water. So wait till the water fills up. Once it fills up, you'll you'll notice the water will stop flowing, and then uh, the heater will click on. Okay, the solid state heater you won't hear a click. Sometimes there on some models there's a light, like this light that turns on and off. So when the heater turns on, this light comes on. Uh, when the heater turns off, this light is off. Okay, so that's an indication because it's real quiet. Whereas this one makes a loud. You can hear it. it's a loud clank okay so uh especially on the junior so once it turns on it heats up you you make uh doses uh in this particular case the only thing that will lower the water in the boiler there's only two things that will lower, lower the water uh one is obviously a t1 where you're taking hot water out that's the fastest way to lower the water in the boiler another thing that will lower the uh, boiler water is steam if you use a but you got to use a lot of steam to lower the water 
below this probe. Um, the, the, once it goes to a certain level, the water valve kicks in, fills up the tank, the heater comes back on because now there's cold water in it. It brings it up to steam pressure, the safety, the steam switch, pressure switch turns off. And oh, that's another thing that controls the heater too. Uh, this is in series with the, the contactor. So, so if this switch uh, turns off, the heater goes off too. And this one you can tell because it has a definite click. It has a, I have videos on it where it has a, you can hear it click. Okay, so, and, and then you'll see steam and everything else come out. Okay, so this one's, you can hear this, it's loud enough to hear. Okay, um, other than that, that's pretty much the power. The rest of the power goes to the, the computer and then it controls the, the various valves. And it, it's a 24 volt system. The, the valves are all labeled, the coils are all labeled 24 volts. Okay, so that's this computer. Um, other than that, the only other places that the power goes to is, oh, um, you have these cup heaters that's on top, and uh, depending if it's plugged in or not, but it just, it just throws voltage to the, the cup heater, and if I'm not mistaken, this is tw 24 volts, I don't think it's 220, because that'd be, you got to remember now, water, Sometimes water is up here because people throw wet cups up here and it drains down into here and the heat evaporates it. That's why there's this protective plate. Uh, the water really doesn't drain down into the machine unless you pour a lot of water in here, which somebody did. Uh, otherwise, I believe it's 24 volts. Anyway. Okay, so any questions, put it in the comments. Uh, but basic layout for heater and water filling for most uh, modern uh, coffee machines, okay? The, all the coffee machines work in a very, very similar way, okay? They all monitor water before they turn on the heat, okay? So if you don't have any heat, check your water level.